Hello and welcome back. So this is a really quick video because I was just doing a live video and the Wi-Fi reception was so bad. <coughs> Sorry, now my throat is so bad. The Wi-Fi reception was so bad that it meant that it all went pixelated and you couldn't see what I was doing. So I promised to quickly record what I was going to say, show you the saddle. So this is the recorded version to upload. So what were we talking about? We were talking about this saddle that had been sent in for a dissection really and we were dissecting it live and answering some questions um so some of the questions that we are that i answered were about the flocking because last week's video was about um, a full saddle reflock so if you're interested in seeing a saddle being fully reflocked then just pop back to last sunday's video sunday spotlight on a full reflock one of the questions that came through was can flocking be too soft yes 100 percent it can um flocking is in your panels your panels are on the saddle to stop the tree this part here from poking through and for the stirrup bars putting pressure on the horse and the points and the tree and everything like that. So if your panels are too soft, your horse is going to be able to feel all of that through the panel. And that is not what we want. That's not what the panels are there for. The panels are there to protect the horse, to absorb the rider's weight, the rider's movement, etc. etc. So yes, in answer to that question, panels can be too soft. They can also be too hard. And when they're too hard, it's a good time to get the saddle reflocked, get it all stripped out and all put back in again. Right then, let's crack on again with this dissection. So what I had done was I've unstitched it at the front and I've unstitched it around the back and we've taken the panel off. Whilst we were here, we had a look in here at the flocking and we saw that the flocking was very hot. I don't think you see that dust. Very hard, very dusty, very stringy, literally held together with bits of string and just not nice at all. You see that? Clumpy. Clumpy. Um, not flocking that you want to have in your saddle at all. And this is the flocking that you want in your saddle. Not. Yay! Boo! Yay! Boo! Yay! Boo! Yay! Boo! Yay! So that's what we had got to. We'd looked in there. We'd seen that it was all lumpy, bumpy. We'd seen they were, the panels were a bit uneven. Can't see so well on here, but like. Have slightly different shapes they were very lumpy very bumpy and creased you can see here so the panels themselves were not particularly nice and then we had just got to looking at the tree when the internet did its thing it's lovely living here really really lovely my dog gets to play outside all the time i have horses literally in my garden well, behind my garden and it's lovely living this rurally, really. and very rarely do we have a car go past we have quite a few tractors but no cars great the bad thing about living rurally is that we are not on BT's priority list to get BT's fibre thingy we take put in. It's Friday night, I'm drinking Baileys. If anyone's interested in why my Baileys is pink, it's because it's red, red velvet cupcake. Good stuff. Cheers. So we were going to look at the tree of this saddle and we were going to look and see um what it was like really so this is again a cheap and not very well made saddle does it look how it should look internally i wonder um not sure if you can see but no not leather more of a clever is that a real word whenever i see this kind of material i always think of that episode of friends where ross has leather trousers do you remember that they get stuck in them Anyway, um, also full of rusty nails. Can we see that rusty nail? Very rusty. Put that somewhere safe. And here is the tree of the saddle. So this here is what's inside your saddle. Not your saddle. This here is what's inside this saddle. This saddle, a cheaply made saddle. Um, this is the tree, so this is a structure, like the skeleton of the saddle. So the first thing that we can do is we can put it down like this and we can see if it's even. Oh yeah, it is a bit there. I don't know if you can see, but it's a bit twisted at the front. So, let me just see this. So this is it from the front. So the head, which is like the front of the saddle, is it quite set? On straight, can you see that? Like compared to the seat, when you compare the head to the seat, the seat's a little bit twisted around. It's nearly knocked my babies over. The tree itself 
should be made of um, a laminated wood that's then coated and made extra strong. This wood is not laminated, it's just one, but it's a few pieces of wood sort of stuck together. It's a few sort of joins. Let me see, like a join there, where the wood's just kind of cracked. So there's no lamination at all on this wood. It's not strong wood at all. It's just it's a little bit like balsa wood, really. I've seen an awful lot worse inside these saddles, but I've seen an awful lot better inside proper saddle. One good thing about the saddle is it has actual webbing. Can we see here where the girth straps are? So this is webbing that the girth straps are attached to. The girth straps themselves were a little bit of a letdown. They've got webbing back. Mm potentially leather front webbing back. Um, that's, in my opinion, not safe. I always think you should have full leather girth straps because you do, I'm oh, sorry, pumpkin. You do want your girth straps to be able to snap in the case of an emergency. And I say this a lot and I feel like I say this too much and everyone thinks, oh gosh, shut up. Oh, well, yeah, stop saying it. But it's true, I think that you're, there needs to be a break point on your saddle because if you're galloping along the countryside and you get your saddle caught on the gate as you're going through, something has to snap, something has to give somewhere. And if you've got a nylon girth and nylon girth straps, you're a bit screwed um, because there's no break point really. Um, so the break point would probably end up being a buckle or something like that. So you want really leather, I think personally. Now inside here, it are lots of little nails. That's another little rusty tack. But where it's gone in the tree, it's gone in the tree here. And because it's not a proper tree, it's not a laminated wood, it's literally just like a bit of kind of cheap wood nailed together. It means that where it's gone in, it's cracked the wood. So the wood here, where that tack is, is pretty breakable. So it wouldn't take a great deal of pressure on this tree to break it there, because it's already broken from that tack. Now it's another part through here, where there's two bits of um, wood sort of like slightly sort of stuck together, but they're not really stuck together very much. And because the metal, parts of this tree are so flimsy it wouldn't take a great deal really for that metal to bend and then for that wood around there to snap and then as soon as that snaps which happens I have to say happens with the majority of these saddles now the woman that sent this in this message on the previous video and said that she'd had it for four years so she's done ever so well not having a broken tree after four years because um, I sometimes dissect these that are brand new and they've got broken tree so she's done ever so well. I say ever so well, she's ever so lucky not to have a broken tree because they really break so easily, these wood. It's almost like, is it balsa wood, that really thin wood? This here is the head of the tree, the front of the tree, and it's made out of metal. Now, I don't know if you can, can you see this here? You know, it's a nail sticking out about two inches. So in a sense, it's probably good that that panel had so much extra flocking and hard flocking in that it stopped that nail from penetrating through and sticking into the horse. Can you hear that noise? And can you see that movement? So the head of trees should not have any, well, the head of a fixed tree saddle should not have any movement in it at all. This one has movement and makes quite a noise. So that is because the metal holding it all together isn't strong enough. And because it's not strong enough, it puts all that pressure down. So every time you rise or sit in your saddle and trot and you have one of these trees, that head moves. It goes, because if I can do it with my hands and I'm an absolute total weakling, it's a Friday night, it's late, it's... Alexa, what's the time? It's 8.49 p.m. on a Friday night. I've had a glass of, I've had two glasses of Baileys and I can move it with my very weak hands. I've also got a headache tonight. If I can do that, then the weight of a rider going up and down is gonna put 10 times more pressure on it. So if you imagine that rider, in short, your saddle's gonna be doing this. So the points of the tree 
which we talked about in the last video about where the point straps come from. These points of the tree, which sit back behind the shoulder of the horse. Can you see how that there? That point of that tree will sit back behind the shoulder of the horse. And what it does is as you rise and sit, it will go and act like a pincer in there. So yes, the tree itself isn't actually broken, but it's still moving as if it's broken. And it's only a matter of time before that does actually break. And then it doesn't just act like a bit of a pincer. It will, it will cause serious problems to the horse. So this is why I nag everybody all the time and you're all bored of hearing it. And I know you are. Don't buy these saddles. If you've only got £400 to spend on a saddle, okay, that's cool. We all have budgets to stick to. That's fine. But contact your saddle fitter. Make sure you have the saddle fitted and tell them your budget and they will bring out some good quality second-hand saddles because second-hand good quality is a billion times better than new crap quality, I promise you, a billion times better. You can get so many second-hand saddles now and, and I know that not everyone's got millions of pounds to spend on saddles but you do owe it to your horse to have something comfortable between you and them, something that protects their back, keeps them healthy and keeps you comfortable as well because in the long run, if you put a crap saddle on your horse, the bills that you're gonna, the horse might buck you off, your horse is gonna be uncomfortable, you're gonna have to get the physio out, you're gonna have to get the vet out, they're gonna become lame. All of these things that can happen, just get yourself a good quality secondhand saddle. It doesn't matter if it's a bit tatty, it doesn't matter if it's got a hole in the flap. As long as the saddle itself is fitted to your horse by a qualified saddle fitter and it's a good quality saddle, then much better than putting one of these on their back, I promise. And I know a lot of people have these and they buy them because they want to do the right thing. No one goes out and buys a saddle and they think, I'm gonna get that saddle because that's gonna make my horse's back sore. No one does that. Everyone does the best that they can for their horse. And sometimes they think that getting a newer saddle on is better for their horse, but I promise you it's not. So I hope you uh, enjoy seeing this little saddle inside. Um, I hope you enjoy seeing this little nail sticking out. I hope that it was useful to you in some way, shape or form. And I, But most of all, I hope it made you think to yourself that you're not going to buy one of these saddles. Instead, you're going to go out and buy a second-hand, good quality, English-made saddle. There's loads. There's so many, so many excellent quality saddles that you can get that are made in the UK by UK people to UK standards, British standards, which means that everything in them is checked and is safe and you're not going to die. Speaking of British standards, let's check out the stirrup bars. Let's check that out. Ooh, that one's loose. So the stirrup bars should be made out of a really strong steel and riveted on in several places. Can you see that? It shouldn't be loose and movable. The stirrup belt also looks like being bent out quite a lot, like out away from the horse into the rider's leg. Um, could have been done deliberately because it could have been really tight to get your stirrup leather in. And um, it could have just happened over time because it's so flimsy that the pressure... Yes. So when I pull there, I can hear the wood cracking around the front. So I think it's just so flimsy that the, just having a stirrup leather on it has actually bent it out of shape. So reasons 8,600,012 to not buy one of these saddles, your stirrup bars are gonna fall off. And no one wants their stirrup bar to fall off. Please remember, if your saddle doesn't have a maker's badge on it anywhere, then someone is embarrassed to put their name on it. And if someone is embarrassed to put their name on it, don't put it on your horse. Get something that's got a badge, tells you who's made it, tells you it's made in the UK, Stirrup bars have got a BS number on it, which means British Standard number on it, so you know they're safe. And then you and your horse are going to be so much more comfortable. I hope that was in some way useful. I'm so sorry to people that are watching the live and it was all crap and bleh and I was all <coughs> like that, distorted. Sorry about that. Um, I promise I'll try to get the um, Wi-Fi quality sorted out before next live, which in theory falls on Christmas. Eve, Christmas Day. Don't know why I'm looking around, I haven't got a calendar. I feel like I should have a calendar on the wall, I haven't got one. But I think that the last Friday of December is Christmas, it's either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day or Boxing Day. 
So what we might do is change the date to a different day or we might even roll over to next month or I might do an extra video a week before or something like that. I don't know yet. So, but just keep your eye on Facebook and on YouTube and um, we will do that. In the meantime, just watch any more of my videos. They all go up on YouTube. YouTube is a place to find me really. Um, whilst I am on Facebook, Facebook, it takes so long, partly because of the internet issue, it takes so long to upload a photo, uh, video onto Facebook, sometimes two to three weeks to put a video on. So the best thing to do is to watch videos on YouTube. You can interact with me, however, on Facebook and places like that. And I, it's been lovely spending this evening with you. And I hope you all have a fantastic, fantastic weekend, a super duper Friday night. And I hope that you're all happy and lovely and healthy and lots of love. See you soon.